Hello there. Uh, it is Sunday, April 12th, uh, 844 uh, in the evening. Um, I, I wanted to do this yesterday, actually. I just completely lost track of time. Um, I uh, did some I did some cooking yesterday and today, and that kind of threw my day off, and I um, kind of lost track of time, and well, here I am. Um, this is uh, going into three weeks of, third week, let's see, of, uh, I, of uh, working from home. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, because I think it was the 24th when I came, when they sent me home. Yeah, so tomorrow starts uh, week three of uh, working from home. It's interesting. The one-minute commute to work is fine, but, you know, when there are system issues, and, and, um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, on the plus side, I did uh, complete uh, Fault Lies Not. Uh, it came in at um, a nice uh, 25, a little over 25,000 words as it stands right now. Uh, it is definitely gonna be longer. There's, a, there's a, a scene, some scenes towards the end that I just kind of parenthesied, just this is what happens in this, in this scene because it's essentially just my two main characters walking from one location to another. And I didn't, you know, I, I didn't want that to be what held me up from getting this finished. Um, so that's uh, that's done. It's typed up, and it's uh, sitting on my hard drive, waiting for two months to go by. And so I'm not going to even think about it until June. So that's done. Um, I'm now getting back to uh, Under the Dark of the Moon, uh, getting that, uh, getting through what I've already uh, written of that, so I can get that finished. And I've also uh, went back to the beginning on uh, the past fading light. Um, <clears throat> it's only about ten thousand words, so it's not that that bad. Um, just wasn't working for me, so I decided let me back up, come at it, so I can come at it from a different angle, and um, uh, get everything straightened out. Um, this is just it's probably not going to be too long. It's going to be a little. Uh, uh, this is probably not going to be too long. A couple things that I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, firstly, was that, and uh, I also have now finally finished the cover of Wanderer, and it looks just like this. So I think that turned out. Uh, I think that turned out pretty well. I like the way the black printing stands out against the uh, the background. Uh, so hopefully, maybe next weekend, I'll be getting that formatted and getting that onto uh, uh, Smashwords and uh, Amazon. But we'll have to see how I feel next weekend. Um, it's ready to go. I just have to just have to uh, work up the ambition to do it. So the formatting is tiresome sometimes. Um, uh, the other thing. That I mentioned in the um, video that I did last week, um, I uh, I have read, <clears throat> excuse me, I have read the worst book I have ever read, and the pathetic thing about it is I've read it multiple times. There's a book out there called um, Galaxy Six Sixty Six. It was written in sixty three, I think it was. 63 or 65 it and I are about the same age um it's a it's a science fiction novella it's a, really a novella it's only about 137 pages 137 130 something pages long it, it's not it's not very long and it's not very well written um the author the byline uh says the author's name is Pell Toro but that's actually a uh a pen name for an author by the name of Lionel Fanthorpe. And from what I understand, he made a, he made a living 
uh, churning out 200 novels. If they're anything like uh, Galaxy 666, you probably wrote it in a weekend. Um, it's, it's one of those novels that is so bad, it's actually entertaining. Uh, let me explain my history with this novel. I um, actually first encountered it back in the... 70s? Yeah, early to mid 70s, I want to say, uh, was when I first encountered this book. Uh, I was a kid, of course, and I had gone shopping with my parents. We'd gone to a bookstore. I always go to bookstores. Even even when I was a kid, I went to bookstores. Um, and I saw it there. And the cover had a picture of what looked like the Enterprise from Star Trek. Uh, it looked a little different. There was something on top where the where the bridge uh, where the bridge was, but it looked close enough like the Enterprise in my 10, 11 year old mind. Yeah, that's great. You know, it's a Star Trek novel. So I asked, and my and uh, my mother bought it for me. I got it home and I read it, and it's like this is not a Star Trek novel. Um, I I read it, and of course, you know, I was like I said, 10, 11 years old at the time, uh, I I thought it was good, but I was 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. As I grew up and I started writing myself and I started reading more, I was like, this is terrible. Um, it, it's really not very well written at all. I mean, it has all all the cliches. They're not, there are a couple of... Um, retirees that are constantly referred to as space veterans. Uh, the main characters, there's four main characters. Uh, they're constantly referred to as the spacemen or the problem solvers because there's two men who crew their ship and then uh, the other two who are um, some kind of problem solving or com computer technicians, essentially. Analysts, if you will. And... Um, They're looking in, they're examining the problems around Galaxy 666. Yeah. And they seem to, there's something called the warp and hyperspace. Um, two entirely different things. And, uh, the author has a has an annoying habit of constantly repeating things. No, so there are multiple points during the story where a character will ask, uh, will say something, and one and somebody will agree with them, saying, "That's a good point. You make a good point." And I was like, "Yeah, you you, you said that already," and it's through the whole thing. The novel it, it goes off on tangents, absolute tangents. For no apparent reason, for for some reason, about two thirds of the way through it, there's a talk about um, there's a talk about the Roman Empire, which I'm still not sure what it's there for. There is um, a bit of uh, uh, xenophobia uh, exhibited because they encounter aliens, and rather than being intrigued by the aliens because it sounds like they're non it sounds like they're non-human um non-humanoid i should say uh instead of being intrigued and fascinated by them they're disgusted by them and, and yeah it's like okay you're supposed to be explorers um it it's essentially um as one as uh, someone on uh, goodreads uh called it it's the science fiction it's the literary version of uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. It's, I call it a guilty pleasure because it's one of those books, it is so bad. It is so bad. That, um, like I said, it's entertaining. It, it's entertaining in its badness because it takes itself seriously. It takes itself so seriously that... Um, It, 
you know, it just takes itself so, so seriously. And so there, there's, you know, there's, and there's another point where two of the characters, all of a sudden, completely out of nowhere, two characters, there's some nexus between the two characters. And apparently they have some kind of superhuman abilities that they don't want anybody else to figure out. No hint of this prior to, uh, the point where it's introduced in the story. No suggestion of this. No mention of it afterwards until the last page. I'd include a cover, but there's multiple covers to it. Just if you're interested, just go to Kindle and type in Galaxy 666. You'll find it. I I gave I gave it two stars because, like I said, to, to me it's a guilty pleasure. It's a guilty read. It's it's one of those things that I that I that I've read, but I you know under other circumstances I might not might not mention it to anybody. But yeah. It's you know from a writer's from a writing point of view it's it's you know it's hack work to be honest. And I don't know. I don't know, it's it's um It's, it's one of those things where you, you just, you look at it and say, somebody got paid for it. And in the back of your mind, you goes, yeah, you'd have taken that money too. It's like, yeah, yeah, I would have. Except I would have written a better novel. Anyway, you know, that's one of the things, that's what I wanted to mention. Oh, one interesting part is uh, there's uh, a mental chess game. Two characters decide to play chess without a chessboard. They're trapped in some wreckage of their ship, which crashes on something called the Apocryphal Planet. But they always refer to it as the Apocryphal Planet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's... Like I said, if you've seen Plan Nine from Outer Space, it's about that level. the The difference, the difference is, well, really, there is no difference. It, it's clunky. The language is clunky, and it's 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 like it's trying for um, literary greatness and falling miserably short of it. So, anyway, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and reveal the cover here for Wanderer. Um, working right now on uh, the fast fading light. I'm, I'm probably, like I said, I'm bouncing between this and um, uh, um, Under the Dark of the Moon. I also want to start a new story. Um, I have a title called, uh, I have a title, uh, Stick Figures in the Snow. Um, Basically, what it is, um, we have we 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 start with our main character, um, who was an an agent with uh, Section Alpha, um, from the precursor of Earth Gov Security from uh, under, uh, upon a far distant shore. Then, um, it's him and his uh, twin sister living in a in a uh, secluded house. He's spends his time painting. She, uh, she's a sculptor, works with metal. Uh, and he, um, he is, uh, he retired, um, because his, uh, fiance was also an agent with, uh, um, section alpha was, uh, injured, uh, sustained life threatening in injuries, uh, in an attack by, uh, Jin, And he has her life support tube there in the house, and he uses a VR rig to um, uh, to talk to her. 
what we find out at the end is that it's the exact opposite. Not all the jinn were attacking, it was a small faction and they were defeated. But in the course of that, there was an explosion and he was the one who sustained the life, uh, life uh, threatening injuries. He's the one in the life support uh, tube and his fiance is the one who's contacting him through the VR web. Everything that he sees and everything we see from his point of view is uh, strictly uh, in, the v in a, a VR simulation. It's all in his head, if you will. And um, she spends some time with, she spends time with him on a regular basis. His sister spends time with him on a regular basis. Um, and that's, that's what I'm going for. I'm going, trying to go for like a, a Twilight Zone kind of feel. I'm not, um, I'm trying to get a handle on how to begin. I'm probably going to make some quick sketches of the house. So I have some idea where that is. Uh, maybe a quick uh, sketch of what the VR rig looks like. Um, and then uh, then once I get that done, I'll be able to um, get that taken care of. Plus, I have to figure out who they look like, what they look like. So, um, so I guess that's it for now. Um, hopefully, I'll have uh, another video up next week. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try and get um wanderer submitted next uh next weekend uh but we'll see how it goes we'll see how i feel over the course of the week um and um that's it so uh thanks for watching uh and remember uh links down below for all the books uh if you buy one if you get one please go back and leave a review when it's finished good bad or indifferent um it all helps and uh remember we are each of us the heroes of our own stories and the villains of someone else's. See you next week, guys.